with the mission to execute strategic infrastructure development projects in order to contribute to the development of sustainable communities across Africa, Katosivos is surely living up to its mandate. The construction conglomerate has a proven track record of possessing expertise and capacity on a wide range of works ranging from concrete specialization, infrastructure development, bark earthworks to construction. For this reason, the company is seeded among top successful and well-managed black-owned construction enterprises in Africa. At the helm of the company is businessman of note and a construction guru, Simbi Piri. Piri is the chairman of Kato Holdings that has under its wings construction company Kato Sivos, an engineering company South Zambezi and an equipment company Kato Equipment. The company has a magnificent head office structure in Samrand Avenue Centurion in South Africa. At the head office is the Kato Main Office Building, South Zambezi Head Office, a workshop and a warehousing structure. Kato Holdings, because you see as you start running the companies, you realize that uh, one company alone won't be able to uh, complement itself. So you need to complement uh, you need other companies. So we had uh, to Kato Sivos, we had to have the holding company, which is Kato Holdings. That is holding Kato Sivos. Under Kato Sivos, you've got Kato Material and the Kato Equipment. Mr. Simbi Piri has steered the company with exceptional ingenuity for decades. With his wife's Kanyesiwe Piri, who heads South Zambezi, and CEO Monges Mnyani, the team has provided leadership that has seen Kato Sivos deliver sophisticated engineering works. If you don't own your own equipment, efficiency is compromised. You cannot deliver on time. Let me tell you what happens. You say, I need an excavator. The guy doesn't say, no, it's not available. He says, well, uh, pay and we'll deliver. Now you sit and you pay. Two days later, the excavator is not coming. And then when you inquire, they will tell you, no, um, we thought you haven't paid yet. Because they are waiting for this uh, excavator to come from somewhere. And meanwhile, your workers are just sitting. They can sit for three weeks. Come end of the month, they are asking you to pay them. Because as far as they are concerned, they didn't work because you were inefficient yourself. It's a tough call being an entrepreneur. The laws sometimes look like they work against you because you've got to pay people that didn't work. But in terms of the law, they came to work. Do, do you see that? They came to work. It's you who failed to give them equipment. So I'm saying here, we've achieved this by getting the best personnel, best equipment, and that has made Kato the efficient company that we are talking about according to the gradings here. It's not me. It's the gradings. So don't say he said they are the best. No. It's the, it's the gradings from CIDB. In Haboroni, Botswana, the government of His Excellency, the President of Botswana, Dr. Mukwetsi Eric Kiabetswe Masisi, has placed provision of portable clean water among its highest priority areas. The government is demonstrating this by allocating resources in the development budget. In October 2021, a Kato Sivo South Zambezi joint venture constructed and delivered to the government the 100 kilometer Masama Mamashia water pipeline project. The joint venture was also awarded a follow-up contract to design, supply, construct and commission the Mama Shia water treatment plant situated at Mama Shia, which will be operated and run by the Water Utilities Corporation. The 100 kilometers which we completed uh, sometimes last year 
uh, it brings the water into the old water treatment plant. And uh, with this one, upon the completion of this one, we, are, we have a connection uh, because our line uh, enters the old water treatment plant at the mixer 3 chamber. But at the mixer 3 chamber, for those who may recall, we had left a blank flange. Uh, that is where we will now open that flange and we connect that pipe to our current mixer 4. Mixer 4 is at the background. So upon completion of these structures, one of the connections which we will reactivate is that one from mixer 3 to mixer 4, which will now bring the, the, the 100 kilometer pipeline also into this water treatment plant. The works on site are well on course and ahead of schedule. Let me say that uh, the, the lab which is existing there <clears throat> is the one which is uh, monitoring the quality of the water which is being given to the nation. And uh, with the addition of water treatment plant, there is need also to give a boost to the existing laboratory. So that now gives birth to the, to the new one. If you look at that side, you will pick up that uh, there is an old laboratory which is in use. Now we have built a uh, increase the capacity as well. Because remember, the old water treatment plant, what we have done now is to double the, 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 the capacity. So we cannot do that with the existing laboratory, which is already fully small, small and fully for the, for the old one. So now with the new water treatment plant, it gives birth to a new laboratory as well. And that is for quality control, making sure that the water which is being fed to the people is of high quality. At the close of May 2022, the main analytical laboratory was roofed and over 50% works were completed on the constant level tank, settling tank and the hooper work area. To start with, if you look at that structure there, that is the inlet tower. <coughs> inlet tower is where the water will arrive, just like the way we did on the 100 kilometers, where our inlet tower was the arrival of water from Masama. So from wherever the water is coming from, it comes from the inlet tower. And then across the road here, we are going to connect the inlet tower with the breading chamber. Now the breading chamber is where our water will enter the procurations. The procurations are basically channels of uh, aerating the water and uh, giving it the flow and mix. And then from the procuration chambers, it's going to arrive where we are now. We are on the settling tanks. And before it arrives on the, on the, on the settling tanks, they will fill up this v-shaped hoppers these v-shaped hoppers plus these tanks around us this is where the water will sit and some channels also here which will still be having in the movement of the water so this will be filled up with water the dirty and the sediments and the silts will go to the hoppers and from the hoppers they will separate the clean water sub clean water and the silt and the dirt and the dirt will be sucked by some sludge pipes which will take it from these hoppers straight into the sludge pipes. And along that retaining wall, there is a reticulation of sludge pipes, like 450 diameter going to 600, which will take it to the lagoons. Those are the lagoons which are at the back there, which has got dirty water. Basically, that is a mud. Now the water, when it has settled here, that's why these are called the settling tank. It will, there are six of them, there are six modules. So all the six modules are interconnected with one channel, which takes the water towards the module number one, under the retaining wall and it goes to the filters. Now the filters, the water will be subjected to more filtration. Here it will be settled, it will be clear with your naked eyes, but it will still be, it's not be filtered. Now when it goes to the filter, that's where the, 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 the physics of the separating the silt and going to the details before it gets chemicalized. And then from there, it will be sent to the constant level tank. From the constant level tank is basically a reservoir to store the water then it will be pushed to the mixer 4. Mixer 4 is basically where it will also meet with one from 100 kilometers. And from there, it will be ready to be dosed with chemicals, chlorine. And then from there, it will be sent to the MBR, which is the storage facility. South Zambezi has been instrumental in this joint venture. The company is responsible for all engineering services and designs for the water treatment project. Tinofirei Mawanza is project director at South Zambezi. 
what we are seeing on the screen now is the the full mama shea water treatment plant um it now involves the existing treatment plant structures as well as the current structures that we are building or constructing uh, under module 2a nsc 2.2 scheme item number uh, one is our inlet tower which we have just constructed and completed at this point in time it's strictly just to diffuse pressure by diffusion we simply mean uh, you know the water approaches there with a very high pressure and then we now reduce it to pressure or energy that is uh, compatible with our treatment processes that's exactly what we are doing and this structure we already constructed and it's complete we have the blending chamber or structure that's where we add chemicals this process then will give us to stage 8 that is the settled water water that has been separated from solids and this water is what we direct to the filters the filters we, we, earlier on we said we, are, we have designed and we are currently constructing what we call rapid gravity sand filters um, which, which by that means that the water is made to pass through the sand filter media by gravity as it infiltrates to remove very minute uh, impurities that would have uh, proceeded from the clarification process. Then from the filters, we pump that water to the GAC that I spoke with around and it's again done in the same unit back to back to polish the water in terms of uh, smell, in terms of taste, in terms of color, all of that uh, and the removal of organic contaminants which would not have been removed by any of the uh, earlier processes. Once completed, the new Mama Shia Water Treatment Wing, dubbed Module 2A, will receive and treat 110 megaliters of raw water per day, thereby increasing the total plant flow to 220 million liters per day. Alan Mawambe is one of the project managers at Katosivos. He says the project aims to build and increase capacity of the current plant to handle maximum flows which will be provided by the North-South Carrier pipelines. In terms of this capacity in Botswana, in the, they've got a smaller one that they've done in Botswana, but this will be the flagship. If we are talking of Botswana at large, this is the flagship GAC filtration system that we have here. So that is where the water comes in. Then uh, once it leaves the filter, we then dose it again. This is now the post-dosing, which happens at the mixer four, where they add uh, chlorine and, um, but it's mostly chlorine, chlorine dioxide and uh, residual chlorine, just to clear the water before storing it in the mass balancing reservoir. Just as the 100 kilometer pipeline, construction of the water treatment plant at Mamashia is having a huge economic bearing from job creation the materials supply chain to small-scale businesses. The water treatment plant works had another component for cut receivers to construct a two-kilometer access road from the water treatment works office to the A1 junction and this has already been built. Construction works for Mamashia water treatment plant in Botswana's capital Haboroni will without doubt address long-standing water shortages for generations to come. Katosivos continues to demonstrate ingenuity and versatility as it spearheads an infrastructure revolution on the African continent. As a director of finance, uh, my main role is to make sure that uh, the, uh, the project is within budget and it's going to be done within time. To do that, um, is to make sure that uh, all the materials are delivered uh, in qualitatively and quantitatively in what is on the BOQ. Uh, you know, it's in the areas where we work, some suppliers might also try to play 
games where they can deliver uh, what is not uh, the quantity which is not being specified or even the quality which is not specified. So my role is to make sure that uh, the quantity is delivered as per BOQ and also as per PO. So that when we are doing the payment, uh, I don't have to worry, what was this for? I'm here, so I have to see and know what's happening. So, and also to monitor the progress on, t on, on site, that uh, whatever we are working on is within timeline. You know, when we did the tenders of project, um, we, they tell us this project will take so long. So if as executive, we are not hands-on, it's a problem. You know, our chairman always says that in construction, you cannot make construction um, on remote control, you know? Construction is hands-on and you need to be here. So uh, it's either myself as the director of finance and uh, uh, procurement, I'm here, uh, or the executive CEO, uh, Mr. Monges Mian is here, and also uh, the chairman himself. Most of the time he was also here himself. And then we interchange each other. We make sure that everything is done within the prescribed um, conditions and specifications. Um, and also, uh, as we work here, um, we've got different equipment to come in these structures. So what do we, I make sure to do with everybody, I make sure that whatever we should be done, we don't want to surprise them with the project. So when the time the equipment comes, we make sure that what the, the, the structure is done properly, not to things are done vice versa. I'm just going to give you an example of um, uh, pumps or valves which will come in. Um, the, 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 the head of electrical and uh, mechanical, her name is Moline. She's here, among other heads of departments, to make sure that whatever we are working on is going to fit the purpose. You know, we might have a structure which might not fit in. That will not work. So everybody should know, while you are constructing the structures, that while you are waiting for the equipment, which will then install in these structures, uh, this equipment will fit in these structures properly. So uh, my role is to make sure that all that is done, everybody is on his uh, top to make sure that his discipline is well represented. And uh, so that's my main role here as a part of the executive. It's our um, uh, motto in the company to make sure that uh, the executive is part of the production team, is part of the operations. We can't leave operations to uh, employees alone, but we are all here, we are hands on. And uh, to avoid also bureaucratic um, procurement channels. There might be sometimes uh, agent materials needed, you know, where there is a uh, uh, of course we plan, but sometimes there will be those materials which are needed agent or they are, they are needed before uh, the time which was expected. So, so as a representative of the executive, I can call the CEO immediately, we call the chairman and we meet the gentleman. Uh, we were planning to have this material by in two months time, but the way we have moved now, I think we need now, can we procure it now so that there are no delays? So that when we are delivering the project in time, materials should be ordered in time. And communication with the suppliers should be on time. And also suppliers, if they see that the executive is on site, they know they will not take chances. I have to go meet all different suppliers for steel, uh, for concrete, you know, to say, guys, this is what we need, these are our expectations. Please make sure also on your side you have resourced properly in terms of the raw materials they need to input in our system. And the, to also encourage guys on site, you know, the guys, if they see executives also in sight, they know that they're not alone. Like you see, it's, 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 it's midnight, but we're all here. We leave here, all of us early in the morning, the time we leave. We start again together. So they will not be sulking to think that they are doing anything which we cannot do. All of executive members always come on site. So I'm here representing our company philosophy and our company culture on how to get things done within time and within budget. And to do that, I can't, we cannot leave it last minute. It's in the process of the work that we monitor on a daily basis so that things are achievable as we prescribe. In living by the company's expansion policy, Kato Sivos has already embarked on construction of a new head office in Haboroni, Botswana, along the A1 road. Construction of a warehouse and workshop is already done while work on the main office building commences soon 
Here are the artistic designs. To this effect, Chairman Simbi Piri emphasizes that Kato Sivos is determined to use ingenuity in construction to uplift and improve living standards of people on the African continent. I believe particularly that uh, we have a duty to bring levels of infrastructure that are better and make people live lives in the rural areas better than they have. That we don't all have to be in the cities. That you can still stay in the rural areas, but you're having clean water, you have access to good roads, you have access to uh, broadband. You know, uh, these are the things we do. Uh, so I believe that Kato has a future because as long as Africa is undeveloped, surely Kato will be part of the development.